Okay, now we're gonna just focus on, you've already processed the half inch and three eighths. Now we're going to the larger equipment. Of course, we're gonna start off with the three quarters and then go to the inch and a quarter material. Now remember, this is all done on the actual settling tanks. So now you have completed what you need to do with the standard C handle, all right? Now, for simplicity, I'm not gonna go through all this because you've done, you know what you're supposed to be doing with this. All my gauges and everything, the bottles are shut off and drained, all right? So the next thing that I have to do, because remember I told you that you gotta use the B handle, all right? And if you notice on the B handle, you have to put this little adapters on. Now these adapters are gonna be there for you, all right? So you should not have to keep moving these back and forth on and off, all right? But always check because this has to be tight, all right? All right, so these are tight and they're ready to go. Remember, just like the other handle, this is finger tight, okay? You never want to use a wrench on this. Remember that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is this is a small hook. The small hook will cover up to about an inch and a half, I think, something like that. But these are the new tools that are out there in the field for you. So we're going to use this to get all the way around so you don't have to sit there and do a lot of turning and twisting. This is why you need the other tip. The C handle won't accept this, hand, this uh, attachment. That's why you need to have this head. All right. So you got the handle and the head, all right? And you've set that up. Now remember, I'm not tightening this down. I'm just putting this back together so that we don't lose any of the parts. All right? Now what I have to do is I have to disassemble my hose setting from my torch head. And remember, just take your time because this is the acetylene because it has the lines on it and it's left threaded. Then we take off the oxygen and it doesn't matter which way you do this, all right? Now we set this handle aside and we bring in this handle. Now, the only thing I'm concerned about and I got to adjust this, so just give me a second. Because you see how it's canted? Well, you can't have them that close together, okay? So when I rotate it, I want to try to rotate it so that it goes off to an angle so I can get to it. Now you will not have to do this hopefully, but always check, because everybody wants to be a uh, mechanic, okay? You see how I got that further apart now? Whoops. All right, and I'm trying to keep it apart as I do this work. Okay, now I should be able to hook up my oxygen and my uh, fuel. Here's my fuel, all right, left-handed threads. Oxygen, right-handed threads. I 
already have my head on the, the handle. Now, hopefully, we understand what has to happen next. We're going to start back our pressure on the gauges and on the tanks, and then you will have to take the soap bubbles and test your line, especially for here and here. All right? Do not start this up without doing a test. All right? So, let's walk through this. We come over to our gauges. We put on our safety glasses now. Make sure everything's backed off so we don't have any pressure on anything. We can either open up the oxygen or the settling. I'm going to start with the acetylene. All right. I want to crack it. Let that gauge go all the way up and then open it up one full turn. All right. Now I go back to my uh, oxygen, same thing. All right. Now I open this all the way. All right. Now I can go back either one, it doesn't matter, and set my pressures. Now remember on the oxygen we don't want to go above 10 here. Six to six to eight, somewhere around there. Acetylene. We're going to move it to about five or six, all right, and that's all in PSI. Now we know at this moment we should have gas all the way down to this point. So take a rag, put it up underneath, and let's check to be sure that we're safe. We're good to go. Now you want to wipe this goo off. It's just soap bubbles and it just, it's good preventive maintenance. All right. Now, like I said before, and you've done this numerous times, you should have your toolbox and your swedge kits and stuff like that from your previous exercise. All right, but what we want to do is just prep this to be sod or braised. All right, so and you know it's much easier if you've already sanded this and have them ready to go, but I'm just kind of going through the whole process again just to be sure that everybody's on the same sheet of music. Okay, and I'm reaming my copper out like I normally do. All right, I want to check it, be sure it's no, no resistance there. Now, of course, if you're doing a lot of this work, you're going to have the proper um, wire brushes, all right? But since you're only doing it once, hopefully, we just use our hands and the old method of doing it. Now, just a little bit of uh, knowledge here. You see that there was a lot of black residue down in there. That residue, and I'll show you here on my finger as well as in the, you see all that black residue? That's oxidation. That's oxidation caused because you didn't use nitrogen. 
Now, up to this moment, we don't care about that. But it will become valuable when you go do that service valve. Whenever you're working on a real live air conditioning system, you don't braze unless you have nitrogen going through it. Okay, so we have our two basic pieces here. Now we're going to take our pieces and our equipment over to our uh, workstation and continue the process from there. Okay. All right, now so, so we're over in our um, workstation. And remember, safety is the utmost importance. All our gauges have been checked out. We know that that's good. We follow along. We have our tip, our tool. Everything's been checked out. We know we're safe there. All right, now for personal PEE, or PPE, excuse me. We got shirts. You should have brought your own, hopefully. We have the hoods, all right? Now, what some people don't understand is, when you're in this lab, you've got to have your safety glasses on and the shield, all right? When you're brazing, the dark shield is a number three um, darkness for brazing, all right? We have our water, which you already know how to get to. You know all our instruments here. All we're doing is a simple braze around the top, all right? Now, this is a unique tool, which I like. I mean, it, it really works well. So, we turn our vent on. Now, because we're trying to make this movie and make, make sure you hear it, the, the volume on this is way too high. Okay, so we're going to just do without the fan, but you need to have it on, all right? Again, oxygen for, or correction, settling first, all right? And keep your hands out of the way when you're starting to ignite this, okay? Because otherwise you will catch on fire, all right? So open, crack it open, because that's what's going to happen. Now remember, we said we want to turn this up until the soot goes away. Then you put in your oxygen, nice and slow, till you get it back to where you want it. Now, pick up your rod, and what we're gonna do is, we're gonna encircle our, our piece of equipment. Now, bring down your uh, shield, and when you're ready to come in, you can drop your uh, the front shield, the darker shield, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get set up here. Now what, what's going on with this is it's getting hot all the way around. All right. And remember, we want the heat of the, the pipe to melt. We want the heat of the pipe to melt our rod, not the flame. Now what we want to do is look at this and analyze it a little bit. Now, could I put more filler back in there? Yes. And I think um, on this side, though, it looks very, very well uh, sealed up. That's what you want all the way around. Now, just like I told you before, if you want to add a cap to that, which you need, then be sure that you pull away the heat so again, the rod is just melting. If you get it too hot, then it's just going all the way through. Just remember that, all right? Then, now we're ready to uh, check it out. Just take it, release it, 
and dump it into your water. Okay. So we're just kind of analyzing this situation and it looks pretty good. I would probably suggest that we just put a little bit more on that, but would it hold? Yes. All right. That is how you would use the small tip. That's the process that you have to do for each and every one of them. All right. Now we're going to exchange the small head for the larger head and do the, the inch and a quarter. It's copper. <laughs> 